This is your WCIA 3 forecast first. We've been watching our sky cam network here to so see if we can't get a couple of showers. We've seen some of those roll through the Pontiac area now. Still, though, a very nice summer day here. Temperatures in the low 80s. We're at 83 in Champaign, 81 in Decatur, Springfield at 82. Been a great weekend for those outdoor plans. A couple of those spot showers have rolled on through. You can see a few little blips here north of Interstate 74. That may continue for the next couple of hours here. Overall, though, we're sunny and hazy to start the week here. Overall, looking dry over the next five days. But by next weekend, the chance for rain and storms is back. I'll tell you about that and more as WCI 3 News at 530 starts right now. You're watching your local news leader. This is WCIA 3 News at 530. Enough is enough. Calling for peace in the wake of a recent rise in gun violence. Good evening. I'm Mark Maxwell. Dozens of people marched through the streets of Rantoul today calling for an end to that violence. WCI3's Sarah Lehman joining us live tonight in our newsroom. Sarah Rantoul has seen a rash of violence in recent weeks. Yeah, Mark, just a few weeks ago on the 4th of July, multiple people will sh were shot in a drive-by, including an 8 and a 15-year-old. That family put this walk together because they're tired of nothing being done. But it wasn't just that family. Multiple gun violence victims got up and told their stories. Organizers say this event is just the start. They say they won't stop until changes have been made and no one fears for their children just going out to play. Find your voice to definitely speak up. If you see something, if you know something, to say it, to, to help be a part of the solution and not be more of the problem. Here. Now they say this walk and event was organized and ready in just one week and they plan to do more things like this in the future. And I'll have much more from the event, plus hear from gun violence victims coming up tonight. Reporting live in the newsroom, I'm Sarah Lehman, WCIA 3, your local news leader. All right, we look forward to that report tonight, Sarah. Thank you. Police are, meanwhile, making progress in that shooting case. Rantoul police arresting one of the suspects, 18-year-old Tegan Hunt, taken into custody following an investigation and the execution of several warrants there. Officers still looking for a second suspect they say is 16 years old. In other news tonight, coronavirus cases are surging this summer. New infections surging 70% this week nationwide, hitting states with low vaccination rates the hardest. This new CBS News poll quizzed the holdouts to learn why they haven't been vaccinated yet. It found the number of people worried about side effects, those who don't trust the government, or the science are growing, each of those categories up 10% or more in one month. Among adults still deciding or opting against the vaccine, only 10% said they would get the vaccine if their own doctor recommended it. Overall, two in three Americans say the U.S. fight against the coronavirus is going well. Dr. Scott Gottlieb telling Face the Nation this morning, the pandemic we have today is hitting the unvaccinated. When you look at the people who have been hospitalized, 97% of the hospitalizations are in people who are unvaccinated. And most of the deaths that are occurring right now are in people who are unvaccinated. And this virus is so contagious, this variant is so contagious that it's going to infect the majority of them. Most people will either get vaccinated or have been previously infected or they will get this Delta variant. And for most people who get this Delta variant, it's going to be the most serious virus that they get in their lifetime in terms of the risk of putting them in the hospital. Government efforts to stabilize the COVID-wracked economy are also showing up in rising costs. Four in five Americans telling CBS News in that poll they're paying more for gas and groceries, and more than half say their electric bill is going up. 51% of parents with kids under 18 say the expanded child tax credit will help their family. And the same CBS News poll shows overwhelming support. Nearly 9 in 10 Americans supporting more federal spending on upgrading roads and bridges. Nearly three in four supporting federal spending on rural broadband improvement, and seven in ten supporting the federal spending on child care and elder care. Still to come tonight, life looks a lot different for a coach from Eastern Illinois. So we kind of learned that God's timing is a little bit better than ours. How his life changed in a big way after a call to help others. And also tonight, meet the man lacing up his shoes to walk all the way to Texas. Like 90 years old, I just decided if I'm going to do it, I'm going to be doing it pretty soon, you know, because I won't be able to. Why he's walking so far and who he hopes to help along the way.
Live from your local news leader, Jen Lask, Mark Maxwell, Central Illinois' most accurate forecast with meteorologist Jacob Dickey and Marley Weirda on sports. You're watching WCIA 3 News at 5.30. An Illinois man from Princeville, north of Peoria, is raising money to help kids fight cancer. And to do so, he's traveling from Illinois through 15 states and back home. And he's doing it all on foot. WCI 3's Jamie Mays caught up with him as he walked through Gilman today. At 90 years old, Dean Troutman is taking each day one step at a time. I've only gone a little over 100 miles. I'm just getting started. He's no stranger when it comes to hitting the pavement. 700 is the most, uh, the biggest walk I completed. But this walk is unlike anything he's attempted before. Anything can happen. Troutman is walking 3,600 miles to raise as much money as he can for St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. I like to walk, and I've got to do it for have a reason to do it. And St. Jude's is a charity that I think deserves it as much or more than any other one I can think of. It's a long trek. My goal now is to get out of Illinois. And once I get into Indiana, my goal is to hit Ohio. He's traveling as far south as Texas, but he says the journey has its perks. I meet the best people in the world every day. And he's waking up with purpose. As long as people keep sending in donations and these old bones hold up and my old body keeps holding together, I'm going to keep walking. It may take a while. I'll be back home next year, July or August, sometime in next year. But Troutman says there's no better time than now to accomplish his goal. Jamie Mays, WCIA 3, your local news leader. As long as those old bones hold up, a real-life Forrest Gump, a rooting for him. He's just getting started on that walk, but he's already a quarter of his, of, uh, his way to his fundraising goal. Troutman has brought in more than $9,000 on his way to that goal of thirty-six grand. All right, Jacob Dickey, give us an idea. What kind of weather is he in for? Should he be... Uh, I didn't really see how he's preparing for any sort of inclement weather. He's going south during the summer. so hopefully. Honestly, I think he's going to be okay because normally this is the hottest time of the year for us with those summer showers and storms. The week ahead, overall looking dry and quiet. Look at all the sunshine here on our Decatur camera that carries crossing Flooring America INET camera. He'll be walking in a lot of sun there. Maybe a spot shower this week, but the temperatures aren't too terrible out there. No extreme heat on the way. There will be the chance for some storms by next week, and then we'll talk about all of that and more coming up after this. Now, Central Illinois' most accurate forecast with meteorologist Jacob Dickey. This has been the weekend for outdoor weather here in Central Illinois. Lots of sunshine, pretty nice weather out here. Here's a look in Champaign. We do have a few fair weather cumulus clouds out there, an indication of a little instability. Some of those clouds get a little height within there. Notice those nice smooth bases. The chance will be there for maybe a 
spot to see an isolated cold air funnel again to this evening, just like we saw last night. Temperatures are in the 80s out there. We're seeing light east winds through the day with dew points in the upper 60s. It's not all that muggy and humid. Yes, it's warm, but it's summertime. We'll take what we can get when we avoid the extreme heat and humidity here. Uh, even though still we've had a few of those spot showers rolling on through, we can see a couple of those from Iroquois, Ford, and Livingston County as a little disturbance pushes on through. Really, that's it. That's all we've had there. We mentioned that some of those folks getting an isolated shower lasts a few minutes, passes on by, not even enough to get under the tree wet here, but we'll still see some of those spot showers perhaps the next couple of hours before things trend mostly clear. And I'll mention again, maybe a cold air funnel possible somewhere north of Interstate 72 underneath some of those cloud bases, just like we saw last night. We'll be down into the low to middle 60s out there tonight. I've got 64 in Georgetown and in Vermilion, 64 in Lerna, Altamont down to 64. While we are mostly cleared tonight, a little bit of fog may be possible again into the morning hours here. You can see our visibility. Some of those oranges, an indication of some patchy fog, light in nature. I don't think we'll worry quite like we saw this morning with some of that fog, but still it might be a little bit of fog as you go out the door Monday morning. Then we transition to lots of sunshine here. Some of that fog today held on through midday for some of us. Tomorrow that won't be the case here. We expect lots of sunshine. It would normally be a blue sky, but I think we may have a little haze in place. More on that in a second. In the meantime, though, with sunshine in place, Temperatures back into the low to middle 80s out there. 84 in Muhammad and in Forsyth. Elkhart and Waverly getting to 84. We'll be at 84 up north towards Pontiac. Here's a look at future track for our Monday. Notice here, we see a lot of clear sky in place. That's pretty nice. Future track tries Monday evening to put a spot shower in here. I'm overall thinking that's not going to happen. And here's why. I think what happens is some of the wildfire smoke moves in overhead. When you see this happen, this is Monday afternoon into Monday evening, and especially on Tuesday, some of those darker oranges and reds, an indication of some thicker wildfire smoke higher up in the atmosphere. Sometimes that can act as a lid and keep the instability down a bit. So we'll watch it here, but that also may steal the blue sky away from us. Maybe Monday, especially, I think, though, by Tuesday across the region. That wildfire smoke pours in thanks to high pressure pulling it in from the north and east here. In fact, that's also why our showers and storms are moving from east to west backwards. That high pressure sticks with us. We may get a few surface disturbances into the week that bring a spot shower Wednesday, Thursday, and into Friday, but the next organized system looks to arrive Saturday into Sunday here. Still a little uncertainty on timing. We'll keep you updated on that. I can't rule out a stronger storm, but there's a lot of time and still a lot of details to figure out. Tonight, we're down into the low 60s out there. Mostly clear, patchy fog possible. We may have an isolated stray shower through about 9 or 10 o'clock. Should be a pretty quiet night here. Over the next several days, then, Monday and Tuesday, sunny and hazy, a weak boundary. Wednesday may bring a spot shower, the same on Thursday, but we'll advertise it as partly cloudy. Those chances go up a touch by Friday. I think that the best chance of the seven-day forecast comes on Saturday and Sunday. Overall, most folks, I think, Mark, may trend dry over the next seven days here. The best chance is going to come that Saturday, Sunday, unfortunately, another weekend where some more organized scattered showers and storms are in place, but I think folks are going to really appreciate the dry work week ahead. That's okay. School's not back in just yet. The summer sunshine, people can still soak it up. Yeah, you're right about that. All right, Jacob, thanks. Coming up in our broadcast tonight, the inspiring story of a coach and a father. I think anytime you help somebody else, you feel better. You know, just that purpose every day. Division I coaches are used to travel, but they rarely come home with new recruits like this.
news continues here on WCIA 3, your local news leader. A military dad from Illinois came back home after nearly a year away on deployment, and he dressed up in a costume to surprise his kids while they were away at camp. I can't wait. Um, I haven't been waiting for this day for the last 11 months. That's Christopher DeWitt, a military police officer in the Army. After nearly a year away in Cuba, he put on a different uniform, the costume of Leroy the Lobster. The kids at the Mundelein summer camp thought they were learning some safety tips, his eight-year-old daughter Gemma among them. When it was her turn to meet Leroy, he showed her a familiar token, a lucky toy that she gave her dad before he left, and then gave her the surprise of her young life. It's amazing. I, I've, missed, I've missed her tremendously, so yeah. it's really a good feeling right now. They were elated then, DeWitt putting the lobster head back on. He had to surprise his four-year-old son, Colton, across the street at camp. Yeah. Uh, it went great. I, uh, you know, it's, it's, like I said, it's amazing being home and seeing these guys. And, you know, I miss them every single day. And welcome home. It's always great to see such an emotional homecoming. Marley, we're to hear now with, uh, with sports. And another emotional homecoming for Illini Nation, of course, in the return of Kofi Coburn. Plus, the return or the homecoming of three special new additions to the Belant family. We'll have that story coming up next in sports. From the official television station of Illini Sports, this is WCIA 3 Sports and your Illini Nation. Kofi Coburn's return to Illinois has halted the roller coaster of an offseason. He's a potential preseason National Player of the Year candidate, and having him back for another season boosts the Illini roster tremendously. They're also returning the Big Ten Six Man of the Year, Andre Curbelo, along with super seniors Trent Frazier and DeMonte Williams. And when you add in grad transfers Omar Payne and Alfonso Plummer, the Illini are pretty stacked for the upcoming season. Head coach Brad Underwood has already seen the potential in their offseason workout. Omar coming from Florida and, and Alfonso coming from, from Utah to go along with our three freshmen. Uh, you see the maturity, uh, so that transition's been great. Uh, and I'm excited as heck about our freshmen. They all offer something a little bit different talent-wise, but in terms of getting in the gym and working and, and, and diving right in, they've, they've been both feet into uh, to, to the work part. Illinois' freshman class ranks fourth in the Big Ten. 
Mapillon is looking forward to staying in Charleston for a while. The Eastern Illinois women's basketball head coach spent most of last season going back and forth to Peru, but it was all to make a difference in the lives of three girls that are now a part of his family. WCI3's Brett Behrens has that story. Life looks a whole lot different these days for Matt and Kari Bolant. And it's exactly where they feel called to be. The girls are keeping us young. Yes, oh my gosh. that's true. The 50-year-old Eastern Illinois women's basketball coach and his wife adopted three girls from Peru in January. 13-year-old Marita is the oldest. Meredi is 11 and Flor is the youngest. She's nine. The sisters are still learning English after living in an orphanage outside Trujillo for six years before the Bolans adopted them and answered prayer for all. We saw a picture of them and, yeah, really felt called to go get these three. and Instantly started crying, and we knew that that's what the Lord had for us. Matt and Kari first thought about adopting 15 years ago. The ball got rolling in 2016 when they saw that picture of the girls. Matt was the head coach at Illinois then, and little did they know it would be a five-year process. So we kind of learned that God's timing is a little bit better than ours. After Bolant was let go with the Illini in March 2017, a decision had to be made. If they moved out of state, it would only further delay the adoption process. We felt really called to do it, so it didn't merely matter what roadblock would come up. That's when Eastern Illinois called, and Bolant was up front from the start. When I interviewed, I said, hey, just to let you know, if I do get the job, you know, we're in the process of adopting. Sometime I'm going to have to go to Lima. The thing Bolant didn't know is that he would make that trip during the season and in the middle of a pandemic. Matt was back and forth to Peru from November to January, spending a total of five weeks in South America, but only missing four games. Kari spent three months with the girls before they could come to the U.S. The whole family finally arrived in Charleston, January 24th. Unbelievable, really. Yeah. We're so grateful, and they're teaching us so much. Um, so it's really a a blessing both ways. It's a new chapter in the Bolan's 27 years of marriage. Their biological daughters, Abby and Reagan, are out of the house now, 10 years older than their new sisters, but Matt and Kari have a whole team surrounding them with love. Our players love our daughters. You know, it's one of the benefits of being a coach, and this year's team is, is as good as any that I've had as far as who they are. Medity, you're next. We see them quite a bit. They came to our team camp, so we got to spend time there, and then we go to coaches for dinner, and they're always there. Yeah. Getting to play with them and get to know them is really cool. Bolan admits it's not always easy. Being a Division I coach and dad of five doesn't leave him much free time, but he wouldn't have it any other way. I think anytime you help somebody else, you feel better. You know, just that purpose every day, that sense of joy you get in, in helping them, you know, I feel better in, in when I see them growing and doing better. Reporting in Charleston, Brett Behrens, WCIA 3 Sports. All right, Brett, thank you so much for that incredible story. And even more incredible, I think, is that he only missed four games through the entire season, making those trips back and forth. But glad to see those girls have found a new home. Yeah, committed to both things and during a pandemic, no less. Great story. Yeah. All right, Molly, thanks. Jacob Dickey has one final check of our weather next.
overall, the week ahead looking pretty dry out there. Sunny and hazy Monday and Tuesday. Can't rule out a spot shower Wednesday, Thursday. Maybe a few thunder showers on Friday. The next organized system, though, will arrive sometime Saturday to Sunday, bringing the chance for some scattered showers and storms. As we go into the weekend, we'll keep you updated on that. Very seasonal temperatures, though. We should be in those upper 80s this time of year. Notice those lows, though, climbing each night a little bit. That muggy moisture on the way. We're looking forward to it. The week just ahead. Just like summer. All right, we'll see you at 10 o'clock tonight. 60 Minutes is coming up next.